Hi, this is Thomas from Apex Game Tools. In this video, we're going to look at obstacles and at the grid setting uh, related to obstacles. So there are three different types of obstacles uh, in Apex Path, and we are going to go through each of them. The first of them is the static obstacle. Um, the sec second is obstacles that are defined um, by the height map, and the last type um, is called dynamic obstacles. Now we start up by looking at uh, the static obstacles. They are the simplest obstacles. They are simply defined um, by a geometry that is put in um, to the blocks uh, or the obstacle layer that is mapped uh, on the game world. So as you can see we have this wall section and we have one more here and they are both in the blocks layer. Now the blocks layer is just the layer I've created in my scene and I have mapped this blocks layer in my layer mapping to the static obstacle layer. So everything in this blocks layer is considered a static obstacle. Now the grid uses this when it uh, initializes to determine what cells are blocked by static obstacles and what cells are not blocked. Right now um, we can't really see that they are blocked. The reason we can't really see it is that they actually cover each of their cells perfectly um, so we can't really see the visual layer slice is drawn beneath this level geometry. You might be able to see that it is a little bit red, um, but in order to see it a little more clearly, I can just move this a little bit, like this. Also move it like that. There we go. I'll just move this one as well a little bit. There we go. Um, so there you can see now all of these cells are blocked by these two wall sections. Now that leads uh, back to um, the grid component. On the grid component, if you've seen the other videos regarding the grid, you might have noticed that we skipped this obstacle sensitivity range property. This property controls um, how close an obstacle needs to be to the center of a grid cell for it to block that particular grid cell. The default value, in this case 0.5, is what we have it at now. If I was to set that to 0.1, for instance, as you can see, it now unblocked these cells in the middle here, because each, both this one and this obstacle, they are further away from the center of these three cells than 0.1. They are, however, still overlapping the centers of these cells, so they are still blocking these. Now, um, the value you should assign to this sensitivity range, the minimum value should be uh, the radius of the largest unit that you will have navigating the grid. The reason for that is if I have a unit, let's say I have a, unit, a humanoid unit with a radius of 0.5 and I have this setting of 0.1 as the sensitivity range, my unit um, in the eyes of the pathfinder my unit would be able to walk through here. As you can see, these cells are not blocked. But in reality, my unit would not. My unit would just uh, smack into these walls here and just get stuck here because it wouldn't be able to get through this uh, very tiny passage. So in order to um, not have those situations arise, you should set your sensitivity range to the radius of the largest unit you will have navigating the grid. Okay, I'm going to set that back to 0.5 and I am just going to remove one of these blocks. We're not really going to need that anymore. Um, I'm just going to put that back somewhere there. So that was static obstacles. Next up we have um, the height map generated obstacles. Um, if you've seen the video on height maps for the grid, um, these are simply obstacles defined by uh, level geometry that is too high to be climbed up onto or walked uh, onto. In this case, this wall section here will be too high. Um, so if I go to my game world and I will go to accessibility mode, and as you probably also know, um, for height maps to show up in accessibility mode, 
I'll actually need to bake my grid. But as you can see, uh, this means that this wall section here is considered an obstacle, even though it is actually not um, in the obstacle layer. As you can see, this one here, it is actually in the terrain layer. So this is considered terrain, but since it is too high for any units to get onto it, it is blocked from all directions here. And hence, it is considered an obstacle. As you can see, it actually says you can actually walk on top of it here, but not much help when you can't get onto it. So, that was it for terrain obstacles, um, or height map obstacles. The last type of obstacle is called a dynamic obstacle. Now, dynamic obstacles are not shown in the accessibility um, view of the grid because, well, they are dynamic, and that means they, one thing, they will change over time. They will be obstacles at some times and they will not be obstacles at other times. Also, they don't necessarily um, act as obstacles to all units. So let's just reset this back to normal mode and we will be looking at this door first in the middle here. Now, what defines this one as an obstacle is the dynamic obstacle component on it. So dynamic obstacles can be in any layer. They are not controlled by what layer they are reside in. They are only controlled by this dynamic obstacles component. Now this component has a number of settings. Um, the exceptions controls if this uh, dynamic obstacle is an obstacle to all or if it is an obstacle only to some. Um, this I can show you in run mode. Um, if we just leave it as it is and we run it, you can see right now the area underneath the door is actually marked red, uh, just as other obstacles, static obstacles, completely the same. Um, if I change this exceptions to uh, one of these values, which are called attributes, um, it will change. Now, the whole thing about attributes, how they work, uh, and what scenarios you can use them, please watch the attributes video for full details on how you create your own attributes and how you use them in practice. But just to show you that uh, the thing about some dynamic obstacles can be obstacles to some units and not to others, that is controlled by these obstacles and as you can see this is represented um, in the uh, visualizer by having more transparency to this um, area beneath the door. It is now still red but it is a more transparent red indicating that this door is an obstacle to some and not to others. Let's just reset that back. So moving on um, we have an update mode. Now I'm going to show you two different kinds of dynamic obstacles. In this case we have an update mode that says on request. On request simply means that it will not update its state. That means whether or not it is blocking cells unless it is asked explicitly to do so. Again, um, we can see that in action. On request in this case We've put on a script on this that will open the door on button click. I've put in some buttons here. So when I click open, my door will open. And once it is completely open, it will unblock the cells that it was blocking before. The same goes when it closes. Once it's closed completely, it will block the cells. Now, when it blocks the cells, uh, it's controlled by this script. It has nothing to do with the dynamic obstacle itself. Um, so probably, in my opinion, at least the better option would be that when you open the door, it will initially it will remove the block as it starts opening, and it will set the block as it starts closing. That will give better behavior uh, when units try to move through the door. But that's it for the uh, update mode setting uh, in the unrequest mode, and 
the next uh, four settings um, are not really super relevant in this case with the door. Uh, the next velocity prediction factor, we'll get back to that when we look at the next type of, uh, of dynamic obstacle. The stop updating if stationary, the same thing. Um, so actually only the last thing is of any concern to us. Um, all dynamic obstacles are load balanced. That means that um, they will execute uh, the changes uh, that they incur to the scene in a load balanced manner, so they will only do so when the processor has time to do it. Uh, in other words, if you have lots of dynamic obstacles in the scene, they will not simply uh, take over a, a, a complete frame and uh, cause the frame rate to drop. So this is simply a way to define a custom update interval. If you want this particular dynamic obstacle to update at a, at a different interval than the default um, for the load balance associated with dynamic obstacles. So this is an advanced setting. So that was it for um, a dynamic obstacle in on request mode. So let's look at a dynamic obstacle in interval mode. So as you can see here, I have another dynamic obstacle. This one um, is moving. We can just see it in action. It's just moving slowly ac across the grid here. Now this type of dynamic obstacle is set up in an update mode called on interval instead. And while it says it does what it says, it updates its state at an interval. Uh, and that interval is defined by the load balancer. Or it is defined, as we mentioned before, by this custom setting down here. It also has a velocity prediction factor. This is how far in front of the unit when it's moving that it will block cells. Obviously, if you have something moving, the cells immediately in front of that at some range, which you can control through this setting here, should not be walkable, because it will be dangerous to walk just in front of a truck or whatever, or in this case, a moving box. So if you put this up to a higher value, it will just, let's try it, put it to 4, and you can see it will block more cells in front of it as it moves. This is obviously relative to its velocity. Next thing here, stop updating if stationary. This is basically for obstacles that will enter the scene, roll around for a bit, and then come to stop. Um, so that could be, I don't know, balls in some falling from the sky, uh, whatever, cars rolling about, something that will have some kind of movement initially and then it will come to a stop at some point. If that is the case, it is a waste of resources to continue to update a dynamic obstacle that will not move anymore. So if that is the case that you know that that particular obstacle, once it's come to rest, it will not move or resize or whatever, then you can check this and it will simply stop updating um, completely when it comes to a full halt. And the value below this, stationary threshold seconds, simply is uh, when you have checked this one up here, you can select how many seconds it needs to be stationary before it kicks in and stops updating. So that was it for dynamic obstacles, and now we have covered all the different kinds of obstacles that you can set up with Apex Path.